Father, what a glorious, glorious evening, Lord. What a glorious day, Lord, to bow down in your presence, Lord. And just bring thanks, Lord. I just have this in my heart, just to bow down in the presence of the King and just bring thanks. Just bring praise and thanksgiving for the cross. For his son that was sent, that died on the cross of Calvary and brought us everlasting life. Who gave us this invitation to become his covenant bride. Our Father, we worship you and we praise you, our Father, as we, as we gather to glorify you, our Father. Abba Father, I pray that every word that proceeds from my mouth, Lord, I pray that it will be 100% in line with your word. I pray, Lord, that anything that I speak, Lord, that is not 100% in line with your word, Lord, I pray that you will take the words from my mouth. I pray, Lord, that you will touch my mouth with a coal of fire, Lord. I pray that you will wash my thoughts, my mind, Lord, with your word. So that the word that is spoken, Lord, be from the throne room of the Most High God. Our Father, the time for teaching man's opinion is long gone. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to focus our eyes on you, Lord, to seek your face in everything we do. We honor you and we worship you. And I want to declare, Lord, um, in this place right now, tonight, Lord, and in front of any, everybody watching, Lord, I want to declare that I am crazy in love with you, Daddy. I'm crazy in love with you. We worship you and we praise you, Abba Father. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Son of God. Amen. So many times you hear all these debates about the feasts of the Lord. And we're not going to go there. But I just want to invite you on this journey with me. On this journey through the story of Passover. Maybe we can just revisit that story again as we thank the King of Glory for His Son that came to die for us on the cross, Prince, Princess of the Most High God. I grew up thinking that Passover was instituted and when Jesus, or His Hebrew name Yeshua, was crucified. And that's where Passover started. That's how I grew up. But later, as I studied the word, I came to see that the cross and the fact that the Lamb of God, the Son of God, died on the cross was a fulfillment of a feast that Abba Father himself instituted about a 1,500 years before the cross. And that they'd been celebrating, his children had been celebrating this Passover feast for a 1,500 years approximately before the crucifixion but that it was fulfilled. It was a picture of the crucifixion that was fulfilled to the day, to the hour. And we're just going to travel down this journey. You see, because our Father says that we are to keep the Passover. And He says that we are to keep the Passover on the 14th of Aviv, which was the first month in the biblical calendar. He says, um, in Leviticus 23 verse 5, he says, it's the Lord's Passover. And Abba Father instituted this feast of Passover. And so many times we, we fall for this um, unbiblical teaching of saying that Passover is a Jewish feast. 
Prince, princess of Abba, Father. The, the word of God says, Abba, Father says in his word, Leviticus 23 verse 2, he says, These are my feasts. These are my feasts. Nowhere in the word does it say it belongs to a nation. It says it belongs to God. And then he continues to say that we will keep them into perpetuity. In Hebrew, that is olam. In other words, everlasting. We will celebrate this. Leviticus 23 verse 14 says, he says, it will be a statute forever. These feasts that were kept in the New Testament as well, even after the crucifixion and resurrection of Yeshua. So the 14th of Aviv was today, as we are watching this, and today was the 14th of Aviv in the Hebrew calendar and the biblical calendar. And let's just go back approximately 1,500 years before the crucifixion where the story starts. And I want to invite you to, to journey with me on the st in the story of Passover. Just raising this praise, this worship, this thanksgiving in our hearts for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We've all heard the story and we are in Egypt. And there had been nine plagues in Egypt through which Pharaoh just persisted in his refusal to let the children of Abba Father go. He just, after every um, plague, he just refused because his heart was hardened. And then came that night. Then came that night that shook the whole of Egypt. That night that all the firstborn died. The night before the children of Abba Father um, finally left Egypt. And right through the Bible we see this picture of Egypt representing our sinful or our old lives. Why does it do that? Why does the Bible um, show us this picture continuously? Maybe if we just look at the Hebrew picture, it will all make sense. Because if you look at the Hebrew picture for Egypt, it's the Hebrew word Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim means that which limits you and that which binds you or brings you into bondage. And that is why the Bible refers to Egypt as our sinful lives. Because the Bible teaches us that our sin brings us into bondage. It's our sin that binds us. So in preparation for this tenth plague... Um, the death of the firstborn. Um, Abba Father says to his children, he says, on the tenth of Aviv, you shall choose a lamb. That's the... You shall take a lamb without spot or blemish. He says that in, in Exodus 12 verse 5. And then he says, on the tenth of Aviv, the head of, a, of the house would inspect and observe this lamb to make sure that it's without spot, without defect, without blemish. Then, on the fourteenth of Aviv, he would slaughter these lambs. Abba Father says, and then he says, you will strike the doorpost and the two side posts. You will strike with the blood of the lamb. The doors that lead to the homes of the children of Abba Father. He says, you strike the, the doorpost and the side posts with the blood of the lamb. Exodus 12 verse 7. Then the Lord says, Exodus 12 verse 12, he says, he would Pass through Egypt that night. And then he says, I'm going to smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt as I execute judgment, for I am the Lord. And then I want to read to you, because this is a verse that I just want to stand still for a while. 
Exodus 12 verse 13. Listen, Prince Princess of Abba Father. Because he's now told them to strike the doorpost and the side post with the blood of the lamb. And then he says in verse 13 of Exodus 12, he says, And the blood shall be to you a token upon the house where you, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Listen to this. I will pass over over you that's where the word pass over comes from i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt can i can i just read that again i want you to ask abba father to listen with your heart and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, if we look at the word plague, because he says, the plague shall not be upon you. The word plague in Hebrew literally means when your foot trips it means an infliction of a disease and it means to be defeated in the hurt he says that will not come upon you when i smite the land of egypt that which binds you egypt mitzahim that that which brings you into bondage when i smite that when i cut that off everything that that brings that inflicts diseases that that defeats you in hurt that causes you to trip your foot he says i will see the blood on the doorpost that'll be a token because Prince, princess of Abba, Father, you've got to see this picture because I guarantee you this is going to blow your mind. He says, the blood shall be a token. The blood on the doors shall be a token. Token in Hebrew is the word ot. Now, ot means, as a word, ot means remembrance, a miraculous sign. It means a distinguishing mark. So that is what it means. But listen to this. Are you ready? Because Hebrew is this language in which God paints. And every letter in Hebrew is a picture. Now the word ot in Hebrew consists of three letters. And I just want to show you the picture of each letter because remember he says the blood will be a token upon your house that these plagues will not come upon you when i smite egypt that which binds you now the word odd consists of three letters the letter aleph the letter vav and the letter tav you'll see it on your screen can I just press in and just share this picture with you? The first letter in the Hebrew Aleph bed is the word is the letter Aleph, which is a picture of the power and strength of God, because it's the very first letter. It's a picture of this almighty power and authority of God. It represents God Himself, the Aleph. It's a picture of Abba Father himself. The Vav in Hebrew is the picture of a nail. And the Tav in Hebrew is the picture of a cross. So he says the blood will be this remembrance and this miraculous sign which is the word Od. Listen to this. And what is the sign of the blood? It says Od, Aleph. Vav, Tav, God nailed to a cross. This is in Exodus, Prince, Princess of Abba, Father. This is in the book of Exodus. He says, 
the sign that will protect you, the sign that will cause that which binds you to break from you, and that which causes me to pass over you when judgment comes, will be God nailed to the cross. That's a picture of Jesus. It's a picture of Yeshua, our Messiah, drawn in the book of Exodus, Prince, Princess of God. And he says, this will be your miraculous sign. This will be the remembrance. So how can we ever say that we are not going to say thank you for the cross on Passover? Because then, as we fast forward from Egypt, because that was the night before they left, that our Father instituted this feast of Passover. You fast forward approximately 1,500 years plus, a few odd years. You see that exactly on the 10th of Aviv. Now remember on the 10th, Abba Father said to his children that were bound in Egypt, he says, take the lamb and inspect it and observe it and make sure it has no spot or blemish. That's the book of Exodus. We fast forward approximately 1,500 years. It was the 10th of Aviv when the Lamb of God entered Jerusalem upon a donkey. And he heard the people shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. It means savior. It means bring salvation. So do you see this picture? The people are shouting, bring salvation. Where is the savior? And he's coming, riding in on a donkey. On the 10th of Aviv, when the lambs were being inspected for spot or blemish, then you continue to read and you see uh, that the religious leaders inspected Yeshua. Because they asked him all sorts of questions to determine whether he was the Son of God. Whether he was the Lamb of God. It's that same picture of this inspection you read it in Matthew 21 verse 23 to 27. The Lamb of God being questioned, being inspected to see whether he had a spot and blemish upon him. And then finally at the end of the five days, just before the 14th of Aviv, you see in John 19 verse 4, you see Pontius Pilate say that I find no fault in him. In other words, this Lamb is without spot or blemish. Exactly upon the same day, in the same hour, as the lambs were being inspected for Passover. It's on the 14th of Aviv that our Messiah, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, was nailed to the cross on Calvary. And it's a miraculous sign because it's the, blood, it's the blood that causes Him to pass over us in judgment, to give us life, to give us everlasting life to those who applied it on the doorposts of their hearts, Prince, Princess of Abba Father. Do you see this picture? Many people ask, but why the blood? And then you read Leviticus 17 verse 11 that says, but the life is in the blood. And by the shedding of the blood, there was atonement for sin. And he paid the price for you and me so that we can have everlasting life with him. It was his invitation to covenant, to this covenant of life with him. Fulfilled to the very hour. But we're going to press into a place, Prince, Princess of God, that's going to blow your mind. Because we just laid the foundation. Because to the finest, finest detail, this feast of Passover was fulfilled with the crucifixion of Yeshua. 
Even Exodus 12 verse 46 that says, No bone in this lamb shall be broken was fulfilled. When you read John 19 verse 31 to 33, and you see that no bone was broken in the body of Yeshua when he was crucified. The question is, is the blood on the doorposts of your heart, Prince, Princess of Abba Father? Because Abba Father shares something with me in this time. As I lay face down in the presence of the king, the other morning I heard him say, and he said, Harry, have you ever thought about this? And I want to ask you the question, Prince, Princess of God, have you ever thought of this just for one moment? The Egyptians also went into their houses and locked the doors that night. They also went into the protection of their houses to go to sleep that no night. Both were moved in behind locked doors. But only one was moved into the covering of the promise of the King of Glory through the blood of the Lamb that was on the doorposts. The difference was uh, the blood. It was not the price of the house. It was not the security that I had at my house. It was not the area in which my house was situated. It was not the race or the language of those inside. It was the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. It was the blood of the lamb on the doorposts, Prince, Princess of God, that caused our Father to pass over in judgment. To pass over the judgment. The fact that you and I are behind closed doors now will not save us in the spirit. It will not take us to heaven. It will not give us everlasting life. It's only through the blood of the Lamb that we receive this gift of everlasting life. Prince, Princess of Abba Father. Why is that? And Abba Father takes me to a verse and I want to guarantee you that this is going to blow your mind. Because we've seen this verse so many times, I almost guarantee that you've seen it. On someone's story, or you've seen it on a WhatsApp, or you've seen it on a Facebook page, somewhere in social media, you may have seen this verse posted. But it's as if our Father says to me, Harry, take this verse and look. Because there's so much deeper in this. And this verse is Isaiah 26, verse 20. Isaiah 26, verse 20, and I just want to read it to you. Come, my people, Enter into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Now this overpassed means crossed over or passed over, pass over. Same picture. Like I said, I'm sure you've seen this verse somewhere now with this national or almost international lockdown that we are currently experiencing. Let's just look at the background of Isaiah 26 because if you read Isaiah 25, you see the prophet Isaiah that he pours out his thankfulness towards God for the promise of the church's final redemption, triumph and victory. And he starts singing praises to Abba Father. He starts singing praises to God. It's this section where he proclaims and he he pours out his thankfulness because of the protection of the body of believers in the time of indignation 
Now indignation means a time of distress, a time of fear, a time, listen what the Hebrew of indignation means. The Hebrew word for indignation means the time of God's displeasure and in the world's sin. But it's this time of distress. So the prophet Isaiah writes, and he's writing and saying that, um, I give glory to the king, um, because they will be in the body of believers in the church, in the body, there will be this triumph and victory over this indignation. Those who are in covenant with God. And in this, he writes verse 20 of Isaiah 26. And maybe I can just read this to you again. Come, my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut the doors about thee. Thyself as if for a little moment until the indignation has overpassed. Until this indignation is passed over. If you read it in Hebrew. So can we just have a look at this picture together? Because I guarantee you, this is going to blow your mind. I want you to see this picture. A time of distress, a time of this fearfulness. And this prophet's writing and he says, Go into your houses and shut your doors for a moment. May it be for a little while until this indignation has passed over. But what is he trying to say? What is the picture? What is the picture of hiding ourselves and shutting the doors of our houses that he's drawing here in Isaiah 26 verse 20? Listen to this, Prince, Princess of Abba Father. If you look at the Hebrew word for people, because he says, my people. He says, come, my people. Listen, come my people. That is what Abba Father, he starts this invitation with come my people. The Hebrew word for my people means congregation. Those who are in covenant with me. It means, listen to this, it means the troops of my army. This word means my flock. Or a nation. So he's saying come. Come my congregation. Come O troops of my army. Come my nation. My flock. Come. And then he says. Enter. Into thy chambers. Listen to this. Chambers is the Hebrew word. Cheder. Cheder means to enclose oneself. But listen to this prince, princess of God. Because it's not to enclose only in the physical. Because we, all, we tend to always start by thinking in the natural. So when I say, come, come, hide yourself, close the doors of your chambers. Then we see the physical. We see this picture of me going into my house and closing the door. And that's part of it. But listen to this word, cheder, because it's got a different meaning. It's got a deeper meaning if you look at the Hebrew word. Because it's not only to hide away your physical body behind a physical door. Listen to what cheder means. Cheder means to search through examining the innermost inward parts of your heart. Do you hear that, Prince, Princess of God? Cheder means to search by examining the innermost inward parts of your heart. He's telling them to hide themselves, to, to examine themselves in the, in the innermost part of their hearts as well. And then he says to shut the doors. Now, shut in Hebrew, the Hebrew word means to be closed in. But listen to that. Listen to this word in Hebrew because this picture of to be shut in is to be closed in. Listen. 
in that place of surrender to be repaired, restored, or made whole again. To be closed in, in that place of surrender, to be repaired, restored, and made whole again. There's a purpose for shutting them in. There's a purpose further than the physical protection that Abba Father is trying to show us here. He says, hide yourselves Though it be for a little while or a, a little moment. Hide in Hebrew is the word chavav. Chavav means a hiding place. In other words, to enclose yourself in a hiding place. But listen to this. It's a very specific hiding place. A very specific place. Listen to chavav. In Hebrew, it means, it's an action word. It means the action of a child being enclosed in the bosom of their parent. In order to be cherished with love. To be enclosed, to be in the hiding of the bosom of a parent. In order to be cherished with love. Listen to this chavav. Chavav, sorry, means not to hide in fear, but in the knowledge and assurance of being cherished with love by the one who protects you. Can I repeat then? Not to hide in fear. It's not to be enclosed and to shut your door in fear. But in a knowledge and assurance of being cherished in love by the one who protects you. And that's the action of a parent holding a child to his bosom or to her bosom. That protection, he says that is chavav in Hebrew. So he's saying to us, can we put these pictures together of Isaiah 26, verse 20, Prince, Princess of Abba Father? He says, I call my congregation, my flock, my, the troops in my army to enclose themselves, examining the innermost part of their hearts in intimacy, surrendering themselves surrendering themselves to be restored and made whole here in my bosom where you will be cherished with love and you will not hide in fear but in the assurance that you will be loved by the one who protects you. Prince, princess of God. Bit of a different view to Isaiah 26 verse 20, not so. He says, come, let me show you where I will hide you away in my bosom. Because I will protect you. Because you're my child. You're my child. And as a child lay in his parent's bosom, so you will lay in my bosom. And that is where your protection will be. And he says, are you prepared to be in that place of surrender? Are you prepared to examine the innermost part of your heart in this place? It's not to hide in fear because indignation is on the outside. It's not to hide in fear because the coronavirus is on the outside. It's to say, Lord, I am your child, Daddy. Daddy, I want to lie in your bosom because I know that's where you protect me. I want to hear your heart beat, Abba Father. And Abba Father, I will examine my heart. I will come to that place of surrender to say that you're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because I know that it's only when the blood is on the doorposts of my heart that I will be passed over 
when the shofar sounds and you come to fetch your bride. He's not asking us to enclose ourselves just for any reason. Prince, princess of Abba, Father, um, listen to this, this picture in Isaiah 26 verse 20. If you look at the Hebrew picture, it says, to put yourself under cover for an approaching storm. Listen, to put yourself under cover when a storm is approaching. You cover yourself by returning to the privacy of communion with God. By returning to that privacy, that intimacy of communion with God. Listen to this. The Hebrew picture in Isaiah 26. It says to withdraw yourself from, from public affairs. Not because it's a punishment. So I'm not withdrawing myself for that little while from public um, affairs. Because it's some sort of punishment. But, listen to this, but because it's a distraction of my intimacy to hear the heart of the Father. And therefore I will use this time, this brief moment, this little moment of being shut in. I will use it to be in the bosom of the Father. I will use it to inspect, to examine my heart, the innermost parts of my heart. I will come to a place of surrender. And I will know that in this place of intimacy, I will be loved by the one who protects me. How beautiful is Isaiah 26, verse 20, Prince, Princess of Abba Father. He's not asking us to enclose ourselves just for any reason. But for the reason of making sure that the blood of the Lamb is on the posts of our heart. And that is the question. And before we pass out the communion, I'm going to give you a, a moment just to, to pass out the communion. Just to, to share the bread with the members of your family. And share the grape juice with the members of your family. But before we get there, maybe that's the question. Maybe that's the only question in this time. Maybe that's the only valid question in our lifetime. It's the blood of the Lamb on the posts of your heart, on the doorposts of your heart. Are you in covenant with the King of Kings, our bridegroom Yeshua, the Son of God? And that is, my friend, my brother, my sister, prince, princess of Abba, Father. That is the meaning of Passover in the word of Abba, Father. So I'm going to give you a minute just to pass out the communion while we listen to this song. Let's prepare our hearts for the communion. Let's prepare our hearts for, for what He wants to do in our lives, Prince, Princess of God. Our Father has a meeting with you tonight. He has a meeting with you right now. Please don't miss it. Please don't miss it, Prince, Princess of our Father. I'm going to give you time.
not the most unique communion? Is this not the most amazing communion that we have? The chance of partaking in the most unique Passover Prince Princess of Abba Father being set apart in the privacy of our homes being set apart for the King of Kings to examine the innermost part of our hearts as we break bread together, bound in the Spirit, even though separated in the natural. Because each one of us are, we're in our houses, but we're one in Spirit. Because it's the Spirit of the great I Am that binds us together. It's Holy Spirit when He breathes in us. That he gives us life and that he binds us together in unity, Prince, Princess of Abba Father. Thousands united in the Spirit to break bread together and to partake in communion together. So I just want to read to you from Matthew 26. And I'll start from verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So he takes the bread and he breaks it. And he gives it 
to the disciples and he says, take it and eat. This is my body. So as we eat this bread, let us thank him. Let us thank him for his body that he gave to be crucified. So that you and I can live a life of abundance, can live a life in Him, a life of covenant in Him. Let us eat the bread together and thank Him. Abba, Father, thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your son that said, Father, here I am. Let them crucify me. I will pay the price. For if the bride has to pay the price themselves, it will be too much. Thank you for your son, the lamb without spot or blemish, the lamb without sin that came to take our place and say, Father, I will die on the cross so that Harry can live. I will die on the cross in the place of Harry. So that he can have the opportunity to choose life and have the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts of his heart so that you, Father, can pass over when judgment day comes. Because you will see the covenant bride through the blood of the Lamb. A bride, your word says, Lord, without spot or blemish. A bride without spot or blemish. Thank you, Abba Father, for the body of your Son, Jesus, that was torn apart as he carried the cross through the streets of Jerusalem, Abba Father. Ah, Abba Father, thank you for the crown of thorns that he wore. Thank you, Abba Father, for the 39 lashes, Abba, Father, that he took. That by his stripes we can be healed. Abba, Father, we worship you and we praise you, Daddy God. And we honor you. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua. Verse 27 of Matthew 26. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it to them saying drink. All of it. See Prince Princess of Abba Father. The invitation to this covenant is for all. Because he says drink all of it. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Verse 28. So he gives the cup this invitation to the bride to drink. Let us drink from the cup together. Abba Father, thank you. Thank you, Abba Father, for the blood of your Son. Thank you, Abba Father, for every drop, Lord. Every drop of blood that was shed, Lord. For each and every one of us, Lord. Even, Lord, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane where it started, Lord, where... drops of blood, Lord, as it mixed with his sweat, Lord, fell to the ground, Lord. 
as he took our sins upon him, Abba Father. Abba Father, thank you. Thank you, Abba Father, for your son that gave his body, that for the blood that was shed in such a way that your word says that they couldn't even recognize him. Oh, Abba Father. Can we ever comprehend this picture? So Abba Father, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to kneel down and thank you, Daddy. I just want to thank you, Abba Father, for the blood of your son. Thank you, Abba Father, for the blood. That I can enter into this covenant and that each and every one of us can enter into this covenant of our Father. Thank you, Abba Father, for the communion. Thank you, Abba Father, that the bride in this can unite and celebrate this covenant with the bridegroom. The Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the Great I Am. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Son of God. Amen. May this communion be everlasting in your heart. And may we never forget that each and every one of us, all of us have been invited. Will you accept this invitation, Prince, Princess of Abba Father? Will you accept this invitation as we are shut in to this place? Not in fear, but in the bosom of love of our Father. What a glorious, glorious promise to hold on to. Receive this blessing as we thank Him for everything that He's done. Eva rechecha adunai vishmerecha. Ya era adunai panavelecha. Vihunecha. Yesa adunai panavelecha. Veasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he lift up his countenance amongst you. And give you peace. Amen. Amen.